Hello, my name is Corey Toombs and today I'm going to show you how to do a cutscene in Pixel Game Maker MV. There is a tutorial similar to this by Baz. You can find it on YouTube by searching Easy Cutscenes Pixel Game Maker MV or just going to Baz's channel, which I uh, uh, recommend you subscribe to. Now, how is uh, my video different? Well, instead of showing uh, text boxes, I'm going to be showing images. So I've made a message box in GIMP and uh, each message I have typed in GIMP and I can do whatever I want. I can make this look however I want each and every time. And um, I can export this as an image. So I'm going to be using images instead. In addition, I'm not going to be using a database uh, which Baz uses. I find that the database will uh, very frequently crash the game. So I suggest you also watch his video because uh, many of his ideas I do steal, but there are some differences between the two tutorials on how to do this. Now in your scene, let's go to tile scene, my scene, so, so I'm going to right away have a scene where my character starts here. And what, what triggers the scene is actually a tile. So this tile is hidden, hidden beneath the parallax. So um, you, you can't see it, but I can see it. Now, if you don't have a parallax, you can use an invisible tile. So how does this tile trigger? Um, actually, before I show you that, I also what you're also going to need to put on here is um, an event. So I have something called starting scene. It's just an empty box up here and this controls everything, okay? Uh, what's happening. So if you go to the tiles, you see my tiles here. I have a variable assigned to this tile, a player group when an object overlaps tile, okay? So this variable is going to trigger our scene, number two, okay? So in objects, we're going to go and uh, in player, you're going to have um, some things you can call, called cutscene. have one for idle, one for run, and one for jump. Now you can notice over here, I ignore move input and ignore direction change. So you cannot control your character, but they are going to be making these animations. Uh, so this is not going to use the database. So Baz uses the database and uh, my tutorial doesn't because I found that the database will cause you some problems. Now, if you're experiencing problems, you can uh, do that. Now, here is our starting scene, which I have, which I showed you in my scene. It was that empty box. You want to make sure that this is not affected by gravity. Now, if it was, it would just fall. It would be an empty box. You wouldn't see it, but it, it would take up memory. So this is just going to wait for something to happen. What's it going to be waiting for? For the player to be touching that tile. Player 1, single, area detection is equal to 2. So that's the variable. Remember I had the tile set to 2. Now there's another thing I'm going to here have checked. And this will this event will only play if control switch, switch common control, can I speak, uh, is off. Okay, if this is off, if number 6 is off. So at the end of this event, six will turn off, okay? Now, so here in scene one, or in show text one, after I'm waiting here, I execute the object action, player one, single cutscene idle. So this is the cutscene where the player can't move. They're just standing idly, okay? I'm going to wait for that runtime action, and I'm going to show my image. There's no time limit. And this image will hide on object action change. So how does the action change? That's here. If I press the button, the action will change. This will show another image. And then here, this action will now change, and now my character is going to run and jump. So here I execute the object run, 
and I'm going to now move my object at a 90 degree angle or 64 dot counts and I'm going to wait this much time for that to happen so here's my waiting wait 0 0.02 seconds and then I'm going to have my player jump okay and then I'm going to move about a 55 degree angle 90 dots and I'm going to wait for 0 0.06 seconds and then I'm going to execute object to end the scene and here I have a bunch of different things I want to happen to end my scene. I'm going to wait first and then I'm going to execute single idle. Now see this doesn't say cutscene, this is idle. So now I'm telling the game go to idle animation. Now I can control the idle animation. It's not the cutscene idle. So I want to give back control. Now I have a lot of different control switches here. This is um, allows me to save the game or pause the game. This allows me to save the game and this one stops from the cutscene uh, playing the game. Now if you do have a pause function you want to make sure that you are stopping the ability to pause your game while this action is playing. And then I just execute end here which which is this one where nothing happens. Now if I re-enter the map, it will go back to here, but it cannot play a game because this control switch, uh, which triggered at the end, will make sure it doesn't happen again. So let's go uh, to the scene and see how this all works. Uh, let's hopefully... I have a lot of things open and the engine did crash already. You have a lot, you, the thing about Pixel Game Maker is uh, if you have a lot of things open at once, it can um, cause memory issues and the game, the engine can crash. So let's hopefully, can uh, maybe be able to play, test what I just showed you guys. So I'm going to go to new game and you can see I can't move the character. There, there's my message, box playing, I can't move the character at all. So if I press the A button, she's going to say this and then she's going to run and jump. And now I can control the character. Okay, now I obviously can't get back up there but if I did the the thing would not play again. I do have another another thing over here. You can see the lag on here because all the things that are open right now to do this recording. We do have another event right here. Let's play through that now. Usually if you don't use a control switch and if you go to a different map, you go to a different map and then come back. All the events have have uh, gone back to their original position. So this is so if I didn't use the control switch, that event would have just triggered again. So there's something that's triggering the event right here. But because I use the control switch, it's not going to trigger again. Okay. Save the game and close this. So, um, is there anything I haven't gone over? So, to trigger the event, you need to use a tile with a variable. You also need to have this uh, the event in your scene. So here I have the starting scene. Okay, it's just an invisible event that is found in the objects starting scene right here and it's just waiting for that variable to be called okay and you can instead of showing a message box you can display an image and those images will close on action changes and those action changes can be button presses also to move you can uh, execute an object action that will that will do the animation 
and then you just move the object and then you have a wait time for that okay and I think I have covered everything I want to and now I'm going to try to edit this engine did crash one time because I have Internet Explorer, GIMP, OBS Studio and all sorts of things open usually I would recommend not having any other programs open while using this engine it is very memory demanding okay that's it for today thank you very much and bye bye